So after 30 years of optical chronographs, Steinard Sensing Systems finally delivered this new technology that gives us reliable shot speed readings in any lighting condition. Now this is the world's first acoustic shooting chronograph and it delivers pretty precise readings independent of lighting and weather conditions. Uh, the way it works is it uses processing technology which detects supersonic shock waves. So as long as your projectile is supersonic, it's going to detect it going through. It's not going to be thrown off by lighting, reflectivity issues, things like that. Sometimes you have sunlight orientation problems, uneven cloud cover, shadows, reflections from snow or water on the ground, low indoor lighting sometimes you'll have. Uh, you can have shiny projectiles, shadows, or other lots of other things that can really change the light intensity and cause problems with optical sensors. So this acoustic chronograph detects even if you got rain or snow on the sensors or, or crud on the sensors, it's not going to throw it off. One of the really nice things about this particular setup is the huge shooting area that you have above it. You have a large detection area above the acoustic chronograph, unlike an optical chronograph where you're more limited in your space, where uh, the, the optical sensors have to see the bullet coming through a very small window. This one has a, a pretty large detection area, and it can actually detect the bullet even if it's 51 inches above the top of the chronograph. So that's a pretty nice feature to have. It makes it uh, very easy to set up and use in the field. And also, if you're confirming your velocities downrange, even at very long ranges, it gives you more forgiveness uh, in area. Older optical chronographs, you'd have to get the bullet to pass right through the window in order to get a reading. And at 800 meters, that might be a little bit of a tedious process to get that to happen without actually shooting the chronograph. So this acoustic system is actually somewhat superior in those regards. Of course, collecting downrange velocity data, you can uh, kind of backtrack ballistic coefficient in the field for your exact bullet profile under your atmospheric conditions, which is a very nice way to make sure your ballistic tables are going to be set up as accurately as possible. So this thing can measure bullet speeds at any distance. It has uh, built-in sight lines and the front and rear and a spirit level makes it easy to set up the chronograph for bullet speed readings at the muzzle level, downrange, and at target to where you can make sure that it's parallel. Now, one thing you want to do with the setup on these is to make sure that it is parallel with the axis of the bore. That's going to give you your most accurate readings. And this thing works with any caliber. It doesn't matter how tiny it is um, or how big it is. If it's uh, producing a supersonic shock wave, it will be able to detect it. It's very user-friendly. Uh, I did like how it performed in the field. There's uh, not a lot of menus to get lost in. It's just very simple. It does have a memory on it, up, I think up to 99 shots. And so it keeps track of that. And you can uh, have, and you have a quick access to your average velocity just by hitting a button. And it's uh, pretty slick. You can go back and forth to view which velocities you had. The display on it is very easy to read, in, even in low light conditions. If uh, you're shooting indoors or something, sometimes it's hard to see those other windows. Uh, but the main thing I like about this particular chronograph is its simplicity of setup. The other chronographs, you lose the legs, you lose the other pieces, you forget the, and then you can't use it. But this thing is just one solid piece. There's no extra parts to get lost in the field. And you just basically set it up and you align it to be parallel uh, with the axis of the bore pointing towards your target, which is very easy to do with the sights on the chronograph. And uh, you turn it on. Very easy to set up. You don't have to worry about getting your rifle oriented exactly behind it to where you have to shoot through the small window because, like we said before, your detection area is much larger on this acoustic chronograph. So for a very easy-to-use chronograph that's uh, very expedient in the field, uh, this thing is very, very nice. And this is something that I would definitely keep in my shooting kit, especially if you're a long-range precision shooter and you want to confirm your downrange bullet velocities. This would be much easier to use than a standard optical chronograph. Now, if you're a guy who can afford Doppler radar, that might be a superior way to do it, but that's going to cost you quite a bit more money. There's also a magneto speed design uh, that a lot of folks like to use. But there are some uh, limitations with that particular design that might make this acoustic better for some applications. The magneto speed will interfere slightly with your barrel harmonics. No, magneto speed works fine if you're just collecting velocity data. 
but if you really want to uh, duplicate a real operational environment while you're recording your muzzle velocity data, this particular setup might be a, a bit nicer. And for those who want to see how this thing performs, I did not shoot enough rounds to this to comparatively conduct a scientific study on its degree of precision, uh, but there have been lots of other third-party reviewers that have done this, and I will try to include in my video description notes the links to different reviews where people have gone into more detail comparing this chronograph side-by-side -side with other methods to determine its level of accuracy and precision in comparison with these other devices. Now, this particular unit uh, sometimes are hard to find for sale. Uh, a friend of mine was actually able to hook me up with this particular one to try it out. Uh, this is a European type deal. I believe this is uh, made available over in Scandinavia. And I do believe they are trying to get it set up to where it will be marketed here in the United States to where it'll be more easy for uh, shooters here to get a hold of them. So I will definitely include that in the video description as well. And I'll also maybe, uh, if I do find the place or if we are able to get some kind of special deal for you guys when we talk to these folks, uh, we will definitely include that information here and maybe even provide a link. So if you see a link, that's the uh, might give you a better deal on the chronograph if you're interested in something like this. And so we'll try to provide that to those of you who may be interested in trying this thing out. We have a super chrono, okay? This is an acoustic chronograph and it does not use optical sensors, okay? Most of your chronographs you're gonna have have little optical sensors and if the lighting is just right, it'll work really good. You have little legs that come up and they usually have them plastic covers that are sort of kind of a, a backdrop so that when the bullet passes under there, it can see it. Some of the challenges with that is that the lighting has to be right. There's certain uh, reflectivity issues you can have. You can have problems with uh, shadows, um, just uh, all kinds of other problems with lighting. And the setup time is a little bit tedious and you gotta have all the parts with those things. Uh, you gotta have all the legs and you gotta have all the little things. You gotta get them all hooked together. And you gotta orient it in such a way. And then you have kind of a small window that you have to shoot the bullet through and you kind of got to fiddle with it a little bit when you're laying down or if you're on a bench, it's an even more difficult because you have to raise it up to be able to shoot through that window on your chronograph uh, to get readings. Now this thing's acoustic. So set up on this bad boy is you take it and you turn it on and then you just lay it there and it's set up. So that to me sounds like a pretty nice deal because you're already screwing around with enough stuff the way it is, um, especially when it's crappy weather or you just want to get out of there. You And you don't want to lose your pieces either. So this deal looks like it might be pretty neat. You also have a lot bigger detection area, like I said, because it is acoustic, you're not limited to that actual size. And so the uh, detection area on this, I think it can go up to like 51 inches above the chronograph which would mean that for purposes of collecting muzzle velocity variation data or whatever you're doing, if you're building charts or loads, keeping track of your standard deviation in your loads, um, you'd have to get up a chair, you'd have to, and if you forget your chair, then you couldn't set up the chronograph, you'd have to lay on the ground or something. This thing, you can shoot off a bench and you can just lay this on the ground in front of you. And it's a big enough area, as far as your detection area, to where it's still gonna get it fine. So this thing has a lot of neat features that I haven't really read about yet, but we're going to take it out and try it, and then we will go over it in detail for you. Well, the wife was kind enough to remind me to put batteries in this before I drove out there. That, unfortunately, is something you might want to remember to have. Uh, they don't make the crank versions anymore that you just crank it up and it's good. Well, I don't know if they ever made that. But. Okay, one thing to note, we got four double A's, okay? which double A's you can find anywhere, but you need an Allen wrench to get in there, see? This is nice so your kids don't go stealing batteries out of here for their Nintendos and their Playstations and their Facebooks or whatever it takes batteries nowadays, I don't even know. So, they'd be stealing them, except for these Allen screws, they don't understand what that means. 
So that's security for you. Okay. Lay this one in like so. Lay this one in there like so. Lay this one in there like so. And this one in there like so. Okay. And this is the same size Allen wrench that I use for my RCBS loading dies to, for the lock ring. I don't know what size wrench that is, but I just grabbed it laying on the desk here. Okay. And it does have a nice little sticker on the bottom, which kind of gives you a cheat sheet for your instructions. So one place a minimum of three meters or 10 feet in front of the muzzle. Okay. Then we're going to mount a tripod and position it directly below the path of the bullet. If that's the way you want to do it, you have a, a mount here. This looks like a quarter by 20 or whatever the heck threads that is that you would have for like your uh, tripod mount. So you can mount this just on a tripod so you can get it situated above the ground if you want to do it that way. And then you align the axis through the unit from the muzzle of the target. Okay. And uh, you can place this anywhere from 2 to 51 inches below the path of the bullet. And it does have sights on it. you got a rear sight and a front sight. And you have a black line. That is so you can align this to your target. Now a lot of chronographs, folks don't realize you're measuring the speed of a bullet going across here, right? You have two sensors, so there's a known distance apart. Well, if you got it tilted like this, it might throw off your readings a bit. So you do want the alignment to be right because you want this to be that known distance. And when you change your angle here, you're changing that distance this way. So you just use this like sights and you zero that in on your target. You lay her down and then I reckon you push this button like this. Oh, look at that. Well, that's very well lit. So you're not gonna have problems in low light reading that. And apparently, uh, when they tested this, maybe at the factory, that's the last one because it does have a memory in it so it can detect what went through it last time. So what do we got here? Okay. So you have meters per second, 409 meters a second, or feet per second. So someone must have tested this with maybe a pistol round, I'm guessing 9 millimeter or something. I'm, who knows what they shot through here. But, uh, yep, and then it gives your average. And you can reset. Oh, now she's reset. Okay, well, that's pretty slick. And this is a stoutly built deal. It's not, like, super delicate. It doesn't feel like it's delicate, so... And it's bright orange, so you don't lose it in the bush. And turn it off like so. Alright, let's get out of here.